Hello, and welcome to the video. Hi, my name is Aprown, and I'm a third year Natsuki studying at the University of Cambridge. I personally studied physical and natural sciences for my first two years, and then my third year, which is now, I'm studying history and philosophy of science. So I know the title is slightly misleading because Stephen Hawking didn't study undergraduate physics. He did a PhD in physics at Cambridge. However, I did watch the theory of everything and I did see quite a lot of scenes which were, I think, you know, can explain the vibe of Natsuki quite well. So I'm just gonna explain whether, you know, it's actually like it is in the movie or whether the movie is romanticizing things like movies often do. Pass them down. Something to separate the men from the boys, the wheat from the chaff, the masons from the pie masons, the quarks from the quacks. Ten questions, each more impregnable than the last. Good luck. You'll need it. Shall we say Friday, three o'clock? The vibe is actually very similar to this, except everybody's wearing like jumpers or hoodies or something, and the supervisor, my supervisor used to wear like these t-shirts with some physics jokes on them, so rather than a gown i don't know like nobody wears gowns except if they go to formals i could only do nine no oh thank god Bravo. basically it's still that kind of vibe like you get questions but you can't do them then you struggle then there's just like this one extremely smart person who just happens to know the answer to everything and then you're just like, what? Like... Even... Do you play croquet? Croquet? Not recently. Sunday morning. Actually, busy Sunday mornings. Oh. Him. Okay. <laughs> okay, so are Natskis, like, especially Fizz Natskis, are we these, you know, antisocial creatures, kind of socially awkward, don't really understand social cues? Are we like that? I don't think it, like, it's as, you know, as extreme as in um, The Theory of Everything with Stephen Hawking. Um, most Nazis are like pretty normal, you know, it's just that we're not like that social, that outgoing. And I don't really know if that's because people who study physics don't like socializing or if it's because we have to study physics so we can't socialize. Brilliant. Oh dear. Scientists. Who's that? Who's who? Oh, him. Oh, he's strange. Clipper. are generally known quite a lot to stay in their room and study most of the time and I also did this yeah like basically when I was in Cambridge I just stayed in my room and studied all of the time I barely went out I went out um I don't even mean like going out partying I just mean leaving my room to like yeah yeah I literally lived in a cave like should I, I'll, I'll put like if those were some sad times Anyway, but you know the idea of like scientists going out, going to live in solitude, like in their lab or in some shed somewhere and then discovering some scientific theories in, in their observatory or whatever after like not talking to people for a while. I think that's like actually because to do these sorts of subjects, you really have to go deep into the mathematics or whatever. And it's really difficult to do that and talk to people and care about other things like socializing as well. Really, really difficult. And I think that's why not really that many Natskis go out, go outside. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being too truthful here or what. So illegible, I can't quite decipher how wrong it is. I suspect enormously. And Brian, that's just baffling. So I'm just going to put it out there and you can disagree with me if you want. 
like in first year, Natsuki is one of the most difficult courses in Cambridge. Stephen Hawking was intelligent, so you know, it was kind of easier for him. Yes. Well, actually, not everybody finds it that difficult. I like met some people, like my lab partner last year, they were like, oh, you know, Natsuki wasn't as bad as I thought. So you might be one of those people. Supervision questions are difficult. So you might be wondering, like, what exactly do you have to do in these supervisions, you know? For physics, chemistry, and math, you would get problem sheets. The thing with example sheets is, they like they're you know they look on the surface like it's not that hard, but like you know when you you're in A level or whatever and then there's like twenty five questions per topic or something like that and then the first, so the questions get harder from the first question to the last question. But in example sheets, it's not really like that. It's like every single question is the hardest question. Because my finals exams are such a shambles. The thing with Natsuki exams is that you're not really expected to get like high percentages You're supposed to like I think most people would get around like 60 to 80 percent in in the exam um, Which can be quite like a difference if you're used to getting close to full marks It's just something to kind of keep in mind while doing exam questions and so don't feel like and you know not to feel too discouraged. Um, I kind of just wanted to talk about life as an Atsuki. How many of the impossible questions did you do? Brian, I have no idea what you're talking about. How many of Sharma's questions did you get, Stephen? None. You didn't get any? I was gonna do them later. You haven't even looked at them? No. Stephen, are you aware that you've voluntarily embarked upon a PhD in physics at the most prestigious college in England? Yes. Oh, I thought maybe you slept through the induction or something. You might be wondering what like the learning environment and the typical, you know, student, what a typical Natsuki is like. Do we, you know, collaborate a lot with questions? Are, are people competitive? That kind of thing. I think um, the competitiveness depends on the col like quite a lot on the college and what, yeah, what college you're in. But I feel like also in Cambridge, most students, because we're all like, you know, the smartest people from our schools or whatever, everybody has this very high ego. Everybody wants to be like the one who figures things out and the one who doesn't need help from others. That's the kind of vibe that I feel I get. And so not really that many people show that they are they don't understand something that much even though I feel like a lot of people are probably struggling this was something that really frustrated me when I was studying like not remotely and actually seeing people what about you what, what, what are you oh cosmologist I'm a, a cosmologist what's that so if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up Please share it to anybody who might find it useful or interesting. I will see you next week with more Cambridge content. So please subscribe if you would like to see that. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment them down below. Or if you would like me to make a video on like more in more detail about maybe like natural sciences or like some more stuff about what kind of options you have in natural sciences or like history and philosophy of science, which is the subject I'm studying this year, um, then please, you know, just leave a comment below. And that is it for this video. So cheers. The theory of everything is also why I'm dressed like, why my hair is like this, because I, well, it was kind of looking like this this morning anyway. And also the main, like the, the uh, Jane in the movie also has her hair kind of like this. Um, yeah, so that's my inspiration, whatever. I know, like, it's, like, not that great, but yeah. <laughs> so here I am with my Cambridge cup, because, because, because I thought it would add to my legit legitimacy. It just makes me seem like a tourist, but it's okay. It's just, yeah.